Hello again, students. Now that we have a basic understanding of loops, let's take a closer look at one of the most commonly used loop structures in Java, the while loop. What is a while loop? Well, a while loop is a control flow statement that allows code to be executed repeatedly based on a given Boolean condition. The while loop checks the condition before executing the block code. If the condition value evaluates to true, the code inside the loop is executed. This process continues until the condition evaluates to false. So, reminder of the syntax of the while, of while loops. We have while and in parentheses, we'll have our condition, and then we'll have the code to be executed. Now, the condition this is a Boolean expression. It if it evaluates the true, the loop continues to execute. If it evaluates the false, the loop stops. Okay. So let's take a look at a basic example again. Okay. So in this example, we initialize count to equal zero or count to zero. And in the while loop checks if count is less than five. If the condition is true, then it will, it prints the value of count and increments it by one. This process repeats until count is no longer less than five. So there's a common pitfalls. Um, one common issue with while loops is creating an infinite loop by accident. This happens when the condition never becomes false. Uh, so let's take a look here at an example of an infinite loop that we have ca caused. Notice the difference here. This time we're missing that count plus plus to update the loop control variable. So this will create an infinite loop. To avoid infinite loops, ensure that the loop, the loop's control variable is properly updated within the loop. And double check your loop's condition logic. Step one, set your base case for step two. Call that, call the code again. Step three, make sure it terminates. Otherwise, you get infinite loop. Uh, another common mistake is the off by one error where a loop executes one, two, one time too many or one time too few. Let's take a look at an example. This time we're starting to count at one. And this, this, this loop will execute one fewer times than intended. We intended for this to do five times, but because we start at one, it's not going to go five times. A lot of times people forget that. Uh, we usually want to start at zero. Uh, our index is usually start at zero for arrays and array lists as well. So here we go. Count. We got one, two, three, four, five. Well, we want to keep this going while we're less than three, or we, while we're less than five. But now we have this less than equal to, so it messes things up. Okay. All right. So let's look at some practical examples of using a while loop. So let's say you want to, let's use a while loop to sum the first 10 natural numbers. So we set the sum equal to zero and we set, uh, to, so we have a total, a way to count the total of it. Then we uh, set number, which is gonna be the number that we're actually using uh, to one. So while that number is less than or equal to 10, so this will give us the first two natural numbers. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, as long as we update correctly. Um, I'm going to check in those common fit box. Um, we're going to take the sum, and we're going to add to it the number. So sum plus equals number, or sum equals sum plus number. Um, so we're updating sum by adding that number to it every time, the, whatever that number is. And the number gets updated by adding 1 to it each time. So we take a look at this. Um,
and we get 55. Because the number sum of the numbers one through ten is 55. All right, and you can also use while loops to handle user input until a certain condition is met. So for this, we'll need to get user input. So we'll need to bring out that scanner. Okay, so, so we're going to create a scanner. We we'll call it scanner. Okay, as a variable. Yeah, pretty original. Um, and it's going to be equal to the uh, scanner we're going to give uh, in its default constructor, or in its constructor. Excuse me. We call it how it's going to utilize it, string utilize it. So, our string input currently equals um, nothing. It's going to be single to string. So while, remember that exclamation point is not. So input dot ignore in equals ignores case. So exit. So as long as they type the word exit, whether they're capitalized or what, we're going to ignore the case. If it equals that same value. Um, so while it is not equal to it, is it not so far? So while it's not equal to that. So this will only return true uh, when um, when someone types exit in some kind of way, whether they're capitalized in different ways or whatever. But only return true then. Then when it's true, this becomes false. So then we get found the, con the condition will be false. So we get found the while loop. Every other time though, as long as no one types exit in any kind of way, this will return false. And then not false is true. So this will continue to go. So it says here system.out.print enter text type exit to quit. That way we're letting them know how they quit out of it. Um, you can also use stuff like this one. Um, so input equals scanner net. Dot next line, system dot out print line, you entered this. Okay. So we're just going to keep showing them what they've entered, and we're going to keep going until they come back. Okay. So let me turn on the error option here. Just want to show you that the uh, equals ignore case or when ignore it. All right. So <clears throat> you also have nested while loops. So just like for loops, while loops can uh, also be nested. Okay. Um, this is one. Of, this this is useful for working with uh, multiple multi-dimensional data structures like two D arrays. Okay. So uh, let's take a look at an example. So this we're gonna have an inner we're gonna excuse we're gonna create a multi-dimensional array. Or you can think of it that way. Um, so if we were to build one, so we got three rows and three columns. How many things is that? Okay. I was just gonna print out. Well, let's take a look. So we're gonna start i at zero, and while i is less than the rows, uh, we're gonna create a j. Uh, we're gonna initialize the create j uh, j variable and put it set equal to zero. And while that's less than the number of columns. We're going to print out a star, and then J is going to get updated. Um, so yeah, and then we're going to when that while loop is done executing, when we finally get to the number of columns, we're going to system dot print line, which is going to go bring this to a new line, and then we're going to finally in, uh, increment the rows. So essentially, on each, on each row, we're going to create. Uh, we're going to put the 
number of columns that we want. So we're going to go to the next row. Here we go. Next row. Here we go. Yay! Three by three. Isn't that cool? Yay! Nice. What if you want to break out of a while loop? So sometimes you might want to exit a while loop before the condition is false. And you can use the break statement to do this. So I'm setting the variable number, the mean integer variable to one. And while true, so we'll just make this go on forever because people do this for some reason, instead of just setting their condition the way they want it to be. <clears throat> Since we're not output like, the number is the number. And we'll update the number. So we're going to keep going until it gets to five. So, you know, instead of actually just putting it in the condition, people do this sometimes. A real useful case of this might be. Uh, if you're waiting for the user input for certain things, you want this to keep going unless the user just decides I'm done. That's a, a practical use of it. Or if it gets, uh, maybe you're testing something uh, and you want it to keep going, but maybe until it reaches uh, uh, a certain number of iterations because you just don't want it to keep going that much. Uh, it's just maybe overheat or whatever. Uh, those are more practical reasons why, but even then, those are just other conditions that you could even just uh, put into the condition for a while. Later. But anyway, we get off my. Whew! Let's come out and people do this. Anyway. So, as you see here, we started at number at one, and we went two, three, four, and then five. And then at five, when number equal five, it breaks, it exited the loop. Okay. Summary, the while loop is a powerful control structure that allows you to repeat a block of code as long as a specified condition is true. By understanding its syntax and avoiding those common pitfalls and applying it to practical examples, you can harness its full potential in your Java programs. So remember, your syntax is while, and parentheses your condition, and in those curly brackets, you put the code that you want to repeat the SP. Your use case, your use the use when the number of iterations is not known beforehand. So you don't know how many iterations you actually need. You just have a condition. Use the while loop. Common issues, infinite loops, and off by one errors. So be mindful of those things. Make sure that it will terminate. Uh, this condition will terminate. Make sure there's enough update happening. Make sure the number you start off with and how you update is correct so that you're not off by one. And advanced uses, you can handle user input within this um, to wait for input for the user for a certain condition. You can have nested loops, while loops inside of while loops, inside of while loops, inside of while loops, inside of while loops. Inside of while loops. Sorry, I got stuck in there. Look at this. Um, and you can use a break to get out of the loops. Keep practicing with loops, while, uh, and you'll become more comfortable and proficient with this essential programming construct. Happy coding and bon appetit. And take a break because you've probably been looking through these a lot. Here's a one time out, you're okay with it.